Okay guys, here we are. We're gonna process, butcher, and clean the turtles that we caught the other day. Um, it's been about a week. They've been purging. Like I said, it's it varies. Sometimes it's longer than a week, sometimes it's less. It depends where you got them, whether, you know, a real silty, mucky pond, or you got them in a creek, which I got one from each, a pond and a creek. So, um, the water's running clean. That's the most important thing with purging them. You want that water to run clean. You know, be clean out, you know, stay clean for 24 hours. That means their systems are all cleaned out and are ready to go. So I got everything laid out here. I'm going to show you what um, I suggest to use. Like I said, there's probably a lot of ways to do, I know there's a lot of ways to do this. This is my way. This is what I found that works good. So let's take a look at what we got here and then we'll go on after that. So uh, you want a good, nice cutting board like this. Um, you're going to want several knives. I prefer fillet knives. I got one regular knife. Your gloves, hose with cold water, uh, especially important a knife sharpener, hammer, and an iron rod. Now, after the after I dispatch the turtle, this iron rod is going to get go right behind the turtle's head and pound it all the way through and into the ground. That way, I can stretch that head and neck out and cut it as close as I can to that head without wasting any neck meat. Um, also, you're going to want a cooler with ice in it because turtle meat will go bad very, very, very quickly. So a uh, good, good cooler, bag or two of ice, and then of course a towel with for wiping the hands. Always keep your work area clean. Everything you know, the, you know that whether it's fish, turtles, whatever. Oh, that's just kind of a don't need to say anything. So. I am not going to show you dispatching the turtle because I know there's going to be some people that are going to be up in arms about it and boo hoo hoo. So I'm going to leave that part out and after that's done we'll get back to you here and I'll show you the first step of what I do to clean the turtle. Alright I'll give you one quick look at the turtles here before I dispatch them. Um, like I said you can probably, I hope you guys can see that water is clean. I put that in there yesterday so it, it's pretty clear it's, it's good to go. Um, that's a very important step. You cannot skip that and just bush it right away because if you do, you're going to run the risk of them tasting like mud, mucky, that kind of pond silt. You, no one wants that. So, um, there they are. I'll get, get one of them taken care of and we'll get back with you. Okay, guys, we got the first one taken care of. Um, two things. He's still going to be kicking like this for quite a while, even when you clean him. So, watch out for that. Second thing. See, head's not attached. Um, they still can and will bite after their head's cut off. See that? And he's got a hold on it too. So, just be really careful of that. You know, kids, pets, whatever. That turtle can still bite. And, it, and you saw it'll latch right on there. Alright guys, see you in the next step. Okay guys, you got your turtle, I sprayed them off. Now, bear with me, I'm gonna film the best I can, but I'm filming, I'm by myself right now, so. First thing you're gonna wanna do, and like I said, he's gonna be kicking like this while you're trying to clean him. You grab the feet, the foot, and you can feel where that joint is, right about here. First step is you wanna cut all four of his feet off. get it so far you can feel that joint and pop it just like that and like I said he's gonna be kicking and for a while but for everyone who doesn't know I'm sure most of you do this thing is dead but it's just it's the nerves that do this and it's so he's not alive he's not feeling any pain all right and that is what you end up with this one foot. Now, I'll show you here after a while, mm -hmm. those claws, you can make stuff out of them or whatever you want to do. But, okay, so you go around, do all four feet. We'll see you in a minute. All right, we got all four of the feet cut off here. I just sprayed down the my cutting board here. Like I said, keep your work area clean. You're going to benefit in the long run from it. 
You just wash the blood off as you go. Now, next step is one, sharpen a knife. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start with the front leg, I think. Make sure you guys can see. Now, you can see, you see this hard shell? Okay, sorry guys, sorry about that. You can see this hard shell here. Yeah. I've done it both ways that you can cut this and remove it when you get to that point, or I think today I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it on. But start, make your first cut right about here. And just follow that hard outer shell right along. And then over here. And just bring it out right here by the neck because the neck is still in here it's just retracted in they have a very very long neck which good amount of meat on it now also that hook is still in that his throat neck somewhere in here so when we get to that part we'll have to be careful now you just take it like you're skinning anything else and Just work it down, keep pulling it down, working it. Oh, I cut that all the way? Still, you'll still feel his muscles twitching and kicking in there. Be careful. You just work it down over, like so. Now, we're just right here about the elbow, or where I cut the foot off. And that's why you cut the feet off first, because it makes it much easier to do them ahead of time, and then you don't have to stop your skin in and you know cut around the foot and all that good stuff. So. Eventually, see, I worked that uh, foot out, or where his foot was, I guess. Now, what you do, come around here, cut that. One leg skin, you can see turtle fat is very, very yellow. Um, stuff you don't want on the meat. There you go, there's one arm skinned. Now, what you do, feel up in here, he has a joint right here that's flat on flat on the shell. So you just kind of gotta work, work this up here. joint on the bottom too so now his meat are almost done with the first turtle quarter and try not to puncture the gut pocket if you can you know sometimes you can't help it but all right now 
feel that joint right, right down in there. So I'll hold this up. Got the joint for you, just gotta cut that. All right, now there, I'll show you guys a little better when I have it all cleaned up after the fact, but that's one turtle, the front quarter of one. A good amount of meat. So what I'm gonna do, rinse this guy off, throw him in the cooler. I'm gonna do the same to the his other front arm here, and then I'll get back with you with the neck. Okay. We're gonna go on and get the neck out. You see I've got both front quarters out. Now, the neck isn't very difficult either. Like I said, spray your stuff down, keep your work area clean. So, you just feel in here. Remember, that hook is still in here somewhere in him. There's a joint right up front here. Right in there you wanna cut. And then we'll get that one cut first. sometimes it is right now okay now here's your there's the hook right here look at this here's your windpipe soft gas whatever now look here's that hook that we caught him with and you get your hook back so I just try to separate this stuff right now it saves from doing it and after you're done cleaning it up it just makes it a little more tidy twist pop the joint maybe cut the sinew and stuff and see this I don't know if you guys see that's tail going I was cutting he's still got the nerves okay, let's give it a twist and pull out okay now again hose it down real well and put it in your cooler So after the it's chilled here, it's gonna be a lot easier to clean up and find it. Now look at this, I wanna show you the guys this. I was hoping. Not only can they bite after they're killed, but their hearts still beat. Like that's beating right now. I think they can beat for 24 or 48 hours after they're killed. Pretty cool. Okay guys, and we're back. I hope you can hear me okay because of the wind blowing. I am filming with my GoPro. So we're gonna, we got the front quarters out. And we got the neck out. Now, on to the back quarters and the tail. Because there's a lot of meat in this tail. But well, we're gonna start with the back quarter first. Again, sharpen the knife, nice and sharp. You just wanna follow this right along again, right along that hard part of that shell there. And he's gonna start kicking. like to do is try to split it here up the tail to the vent now again just you know now you're just skinning it working that skin back on those back legs until you're over where his foot used to be
working that skin back. I remember, you're still you're working the skin back through the tail too. Now it, you can see it's somewhat labor intensive, um, but now what I do right here is at the vent, which is right here, you just gonna wanna cut the skin. Around and then find that join the tail like that and pop it. And you can probably hear my knife, but that is why I keep sharpening it and sharpening it because this is not easy on your knife. Nice blade. Part of the tail. Now you got it so you can skin the tail and the back quarters all. See where we're at here. best here so you guys can see. work on this side of the tail. Well first I'm gonna sharpen my knife. Cut this again back here. Because I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do here. Right here. down right make sure you get all the way around the tail there piece be pain there okay now again just go back down through work that skin over that hind quarter Also work it down the tail here. I'm sure someone's gonna point out, yes, I am missing a little bit of meat here and there. However, it's they're difficult to skin when they're kicking and trying to move around on you. Quarter's done. How long? And now we got to go on to the other hind quarter. Where that joint is. 
remember, don't cut your fingers off doing this. Okay, we're almost there on the hind quarters. There we go. Skinning's done on the hind quarters and tail. Now to get it out of there. We all know what that is. Joints right here. Yeah, I just pull, pull that up. Don't cut your thumb off. Slice. There you go. You get it right, you don't have to cut through any bones, so that's what you want. Now that's free. Now, all of this is going to come out together. Right. Okay, fine. There's two joints, one for each leg, one right in here, one right in here. Working it and working it. Like I said, it's pain, it's slippery. It's... There we go. I heard that joint pop. Now, just. There you go. There is your hind quarter, both of them, and the tail meat. Let me hose this down and get it in the cooler. I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, now for the last step, so you want to keep the shell and also get the guts out. Just no real rhyme or reason. And if you can see the, I don't think you guys can, but that that heart's still beating. Can anyone tell me why? The heart is still beating. If you can, put it in the comments below. And nerves isn't a good answer. There's a specific reason for it, I think.
It's definitely worth it. I'm not gonna be able to show you because my camera battery is dying real quick. But um, you guys can see in here are two tenderloins. Now what you do is you have to snip these little bones away and peel them out of there. And they're definitely worth it. They're a really good, good type of meat. Um, and when you're done, you got your shell, obviously. And for, to get those out, I'm probably just gonna take a hacksaw, cut here and here, Throw that part away, set the shell up in a tree for several months, let the birds, let everything else pick out the little guts and pieces of fat and leftover meat, pick at it, and then you got yourself a nice turtle shell. And with these, the claws, what I'll do, I'll pull them back as far as I can with the skin, and then I will clip them right there make cool necklaces, like the first turtle my, me and my oldest son caught together, I made us each a claw necklace. So, it's pretty, use as much of the animal as you can. You know, there's no need in wasting it, you know, as much as you can, that's what I do. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed that, I hope you learned something. Um, it is labor intensive, it can be, but it's worth it. I only do a few a year just because it, it's fun to trap them, especially with the, if you have kids. Um, like I said, I'm going to get that tenderloin meat out, my, but my battery's dying. And like these hind quarters and the front quarters and neck meat and everything, there they are in the cooler. What you do with them is you want to trim off is the yellow fat, uh, you know, ex excess skin or sinew as much as you can without wasting any meat. I'm not going to show that again because my batteries are dying, but um, I do have another one to do, so maybe the next time I butcher, I'll show you guys clean the one up. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, like I said, we're going to have another giveaway at 500 subscribers. Probably one before then in between, but uh, I'll figure that out. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.